Hi everyone, welcome to this week's video. Today we're going to be having a look at another in my How to Grow series and we're going to focus this time on grasses. And you might be thinking, why are we looking at grasses when I normally look at growing cut flowers? But these are fantastic additions into any arrangements that you have, whether that's in the house or whether that's because you're growing for wedding flowers. They really are fantastic. Just using a couple of stems of grasses in those arrangements can add so much to texture and movement and light and so many of the grasses that I grow they do they just capture the light in the breeze and it just can transform a flower arrangement and I have used them in so many wedding flowers over the last several years and I want you to love them as much as I do. And that light that is just coming in and moving over your arrangement, if you're a bride holding your bouquet and it's just got a few of those stems of grasses in it and they just catch that light and it can just add a little, little bit of sparkle and they can just sway in the breeze a little bit and it can make your bouquet completely different to one that you might have got if you were just using standard flowers. So that's why I grow grasses. If you are a gardener and you just enjoy your garden, then absolutely fantastic to use them in your garden as well because they're doing exactly the same thing as they are in those arrangements in the house. They are swaying in the breeze, they're catching the light and they're lovely in amongst your plants and your flowers in the garden to look at. So highly recommend them. And as you can see outside, we had a touch, a dusting of snow last night, but it's getting melted now, but the ground is still quite frosty and it's February just now. And this is when I start having a big think about what I'm gonna be growing. I'm gonna be getting started on seed sowing probably next week. Um, driving to and from work, I've noticed the difference in the light this week. We're just starting to get an extra couple of hours, I would say. So it's gonna be all go next week, mid-February and getting into March. And that's why I wanted to talk about grasses today because it's getting to be an ideal time to get buying those seeds, get them in and get them started. So here's my top reasons for why you should grow grasses. Number one we've covered, which is looking at using them in flower arrangements. Fantastic, whether they're fresh or dried. Secondly, I would say that they're really easy to grow. If you're growing them from seed, they tend to germinate very easily. Um, once you've got the established plants and plant them out in the garden, they need very little care after that. They're quite often not fussy about the kind of soil that they're in and you don't need to do a lot of aftercare. There's not a lot of feeding, there's no pinching out, anything like that, which we will talk about a bit later on. Um, another reason that it's good to grow grasses is that some of the varieties you can grow in containers as well. They don't have to be outside in your garden. You can get some dwarf varieties of grasses that I'll talk about in a minute. So um, yes, you can grow in containers or you can grow out in your garden and I have done both in the past. So there are some great reasons to try grasses this year. So if you've watched any of my how to grow cut flower videos before, you'll notice that we kind of go through the whole stage um, from sowing the seeds and right through to planting them out in the garden and then what they look like in arrangements. So I'm gonna do the same thing today. So let's get started and go and have a look at some of those seeds. So seed sowing wise, you don't need much to get you started if you're doing it indoors. There's lots of different ways of doing it. You could just sow directly into pots, yogurt cartons, anything like that you've got at home. The way that I prefer to do it is I get these half seed trays. And these half seed trays have drainage holes in the bottom, which is important. And I use a seed cutting compost, so it's fine in texture for the little seeds to germinate. And I also, once I filled that up to about three quarters full, I get a seed tray that's a full size with no drainage holes in it. And I just fill that with a couple of inches of water in it. And then I place my seed tray in it to soak up that lovely water from underneath. When it's all soaked through and you can see that it's damp on the top, then I will just lift that out of the water and that's quite important you don't want to leave it sitting in there because your soil will get waterlogged you need it to drain away the excess and then we'll be able to start seed sowing after that and i tend to just water from underneath in these seed trays because it doesn't disrupt the soil then and also i will water like this when i need to when my seeds have germinated because then you're not disrupting all the little seedlings and things as well i tend to only water from overhead once my little seedlings are much more robust and growing away fine 
There's lots of great suppliers for ornamental grasses. Some of the ones I've used over the years are mole seeds, chiltern seeds, cedaholic, although unfortunately they are no longer delivering to the UK. Although they are delivering still to Northern Ireland and the EU, so if you live there then you can still get seeds from them. There's so many different types of ornamental grass seed as well. You can get perennials and you can get annuals. So you need to have a think about whether you're wanting to sow annuals every year and have them in a dedicated bed space there for cutting or whether you want to include them in your garden as a perennial and you want them to come back year after year. And I'm going to focus more on the annuals today, but you can see Breeza Media quaking grass there and actually that is a perennial. So that's the one perennial grass that I do grow. So here I've just got a couple of my favourites, Hordeum gerbatum, which is also known as squirrel tail grass, and I've got Lagarus ovatus, which is bunny's tail, hare's tail grass, and that Breeza media that I love as well. So let's go and look at them in a little bit more detail. So this is Lagaras ovatus and it's also known as bunny tails or hare's tail grass and it's one of my top favourite annual of grasses to grow. And here's the seeds here, you can see them, what they look like. These seeds were from mole seeds and you get a lot of seeds in the packet as you can see there. And I've also just written a few notes on the seed packet. Sometimes I do that if there's room on the label to write and it just reminds me about germination temperatures, how long it will be for them to germinate so I know what to expect and I've just wrote some spacing outside as well on it. So when should you sow your grasses seeds? And we're starting off with hair tail grass here. So you can do an autumn sowing if you like. Um, you might be able to get it through the winter. It's a hardy annual. So with some protection in a greenhouse, you might be able to get it through. Or you might have started it quite late and you have sowed your seeds, but you found that nothing's happened. But actually in the springtime, because they're already sown, they'll just suddenly get away for you and grow really quickly. So you could do a batch then in the autumn and see what happens but you can then start in late winter, early spring. So like I said before, I'm gonna be starting thinking about sowing next week because we're starting to get more towards that 10 hours of daylight and they'll start to do really well. At this time of year, they might need a little bit of bottom heat to get them started. So if you're starting them in February, March, you might wanna put them on a heated propagator um, or in a sunny windowsill inside the house. And then you can grow them on in cooler conditions after they've germinated. So start February, March, do a sowing then, and then you need to do some succession sowings if you would like to have the grasses keeping going right through the season for you. So you might want to do a repeat batch every month right up until mid-June. It takes about 12 to 13 weeks for them to go from sowing the seeds to flowering. So you need to think back from when everything ends in your garden at that last stage. So for me around October time, even late September, it's been in the last few years. And then work back 12, 13 weeks. Sometimes I give myself about 14 because here in Scotland, things can be a little bit slower and then take that as my last sowing time. So it's spacing out the batches, succession sowing every month. You could even up your um, sowing a little bit if you wanted even more. You could do it every couple of weeks. But realistically for me, um, just to keep on top of things, I think every month from about mid-February time through to June is more realistic. So these are the hare's tail seeds that we're going to sow on to our nice moist seed compost just now. And you can just sprinkle them over very lightly over the surface. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover them over with a little bit of vermiculite or you can use some more compost if you have it. And you're looking at covering the seeds with about six millimeters, quarter of an inch of compost, so not too much. They like to have a little bit of light getting through for germination. So just a thin covering, just pressing down lightly so that the seeds have some good contact with that nice moist compost. And then we'll get the humidity dome over the top. So the humidity dome has gone on over the top and I'm going to place that on the heated propagating bench at about 20 degrees and that should get them away within the next two weeks. And I've also got my plant label here which I'm going to go and write up with the date and the variety of grass seed that we're growing and I'm going to pop that in the tray as well. And once they have germinated we can lift them off that heated propagating bench it's just to get them germinating and then they can grow on in cooler conditions in the greenhouse. 
until they're ready to get hardened off and planted out. Hare's tail grass though is a hardy annual so it will be able to be planted out fairly early on towards late March, early April outside. You can also sow your seeds into larger pots and um, they don't have to be in seed trays because actually you quite like to have them as clumps of little seedlings to then plant outside. It's not like you're going to individually pot them on like you would with your hardy annual cut flowers. Grasses can be kept in small clumps to plant out. So about a month later you should start to get seedlings from your hair stale grass that look a bit like this and these are in the seed tray. You could then pot them on into larger pots if you liked but as a clump not as individual little grass seedlings or you can harden them off gradually and get them planted outside end of March beginning of April because they are hardy so they can tolerate cooler conditions outside and again you'd plant them out as a clump outside rather than in individual seedlings. So moving on to another grass, this is Breeza Maxima seeds that I have here. You might know it as greater quaking grass and not to be confused with the seeds that I've shown you before which were Breeza media today and that's a perennial. So Breeza Maxima, this one here is an annual that I grow every year. So as you can see these seeds are a lot larger than the hare's tail grass ones so they're quite easy to handle but they are quite papery thin so you have to be a little bit careful with them. So these grasses, Breeza Maxima, have beautiful slender stems with these amazing flower heads on the top that are quite large and they dangle down and they sway in the breeze and catch the light. So just like the hare's tail grass, it's exactly the same. You can space out your seeds on your moist compost and just cover them lightly over with your six millimetres, quarter of an inch of seed compost or vermiculite so that a little bit of light can get through for germination. You should get germination within a couple of weeks but it can be erratic sometimes and sometimes it's good just to be patient. Don't give up on the seed tray if nothing's happening because they may well appear. And just that difference between the daytime temperatures and the nighttime temperatures in early spring and that extra coolness then and warmth in the day can help with the germination. Again it doesn't have to be a seed tray, you could plant directly into a larger pot like I have done here so that you can plant it out as a clump into the garden. And this is what Breeza Maxima looks like once you have got your little seedlings growing for a few weeks in their seed tray. This is another one to show you. This is the perennial Breeza Media. So the seeds are slightly smaller but look similar to the Breeza Maxima that we just had a look at. You can see the Breeza Media here with the slightly smaller heads on the slender stems compared to the Breeza Maxima in the background. So similar to the Breeza Maxima, you can just sprinkle out your seeds onto your damp seed compost. Sprinkle lightly with vermiculite or seed compost on the top, so that's 6mm layer. And then wait for germination to happen, which again will happen around 20 degrees Celsius for your temperature and in about 2-3 to three weeks. But it can be erratic like the Breeza Maxima again, so don't give up on that seed tray. Just give it a few more weeks and see if germination happens. And then this is what your little seedlings of Breeza Media will look like once they have got growing from a few weeks after germination. So as you can see the grasses start to bulk up and look very similar to each other between the Breeza Media, the Hare's Tail Grass, the Breeza Maxima. So it's well worth labelling your seed trays. So this is another one, this is Hordeum gibbetum, which I call squirrel tail grass and you might have heard of it called foxtail barley. And again, just like the other grasses you're sowing, it's done exactly the same way. You are just spacing out these rather cool seeds, which are quite feathery, onto your seed compost that's already been made moist. And then just cover six millimetres over the top so a little bit of light can germinate through. So again 20 degrees is probably about the right temperature for getting germination started. Heated propagating benches will really help early on. And I just wanted to show you these germinated grasses seedlings because we've got squirrel tail grass in there in the middle that you can see. And we've got cloud grass, panicum and we've got hare's tail grass as well. And you can see there that the squirrel's tail grass is just starting to come through. There's a few germinated, but the cloud grass and the hare's tail grass is much further on. And uh, it does just show you that they do vary in their germination rates. You could get them through really quickly within about 10 days, or you might have to wait a few weeks. But even though the germination can be a little bit erratic with grasses, they should come through for you. So just give, give them enough time before giving up on that seed tray because they will come through. And that just shows you there that there can be different germination rates with 
within the same group of grasses that you're growing. And you might be wondering why have I got these different varieties of grasses within the seed tray and sometimes I do do that as long as I label them clearly and know what they are then that makes that work for me and it helps if I'm just not sowing as many seeds. So this was a May sowing where I was starting to slow down a little bit on my grasses but I was just doing a little bit extra for succession sowing but I had already done um, individual batches in April and March that year. So that's us had a look at me sowing some seeds and seed trays indoors in the greenhouse. But can you direct sow seeds? Yes, you can sow grass seeds directly outside. What I do here in Scotland is I sow indoors in mid-February onwards, March and through into April. And I may continue doing some batches inside as well in May. But what I do do is I start direct sowing some outside from late April onwards. So those later batches, late April, into May and then those last ones in early June will be direct sown outside because it gets awful hot in the greenhouse by June. We tend to have a bit of a heat wave in late May, early June and then the summer seems to disappear after that but it gets too hot really for those little seedlings in the greenhouse so you're better direct sowing then. And the same principles apply, you are just wanting to sow your seeds in finely raked soil so it's not got any large stones or anything in it, make your drills and then just sprinkle your seeds along. It's helpful to pre-water before you do that and then just cover lightly again with your quarter inch six millimeters of finely raked soil and then they should germinate for you within a couple of weeks and then you can start to space out the clumps after that and some of the seeds are quite fine so don't worry too much about trying to get individual spacing of your seeds because it doesn't matter too much if they are in clumps you can just have them growing up in a smaller clump like that and then have them spaced down the bed and we'll talk next about planting these seeds out and the spacing in the garden, what you need to do there. So it's planting out time. You have got some fairly robust little grass seedlings coming along in the greenhouse. First thing you do is harden them off. So this is gonna be around late April onwards. If it's half hardy ones, then you can wait a little bit longer until you're sure that the frosts are finished. So that's things like your panic and frosted explosion that is more of a half hardy one. So you want to plant that out a little bit later. Whereas the hardier annual ones, they could probably be planted out um, earlier on in April, even late March if it was a February sowing, um, because they can stand a little bit of cold. But the main thing to do is to make sure that you're hardening them off and getting them used to outside before they are planted out. So that's just leaving them out for a couple of hours, gradually increasing the length of time every day and bringing them back in at night. And then when you're ready to plant out, then you need to choose your beds outside. Make sure that they are weed free um, and you can pretty much plant them into most soil types. They're not too fussy. The main thing is that your soil is well draining, so it's not going to get waterlogged and that it's in a sunny location in your garden because the grasses do like some sunshine. Um, a little bit of part shade is okay, but definitely needing to get a good few hours of sunshine in the daytime. Um, the hare's tail grass, they do quite well in quite sandy soils as well. Um, but generally speaking, any soil type um, they will be very tolerant of, which makes them very easy to grow. So spacing wise of the grasses in the garden, they're fairly similar. So you want to have your rows about 30 centimetres apart and then each individual little clump of grasses can be about 25 centimetres up to 30 centimetres apart in your beds. Um, in terms of how tall they grow, you are looking at about 40 centimetres tall for your hare's tail grass. Cloud grass is kind of about 30 centimetres. Um, squirrel's tail grass is a bit taller, about 50 centimetres tall, and then the tallest ones I probably have are more my Breeza Maxima Media, which can get up to about 60 centimetres tall. So they do vary a little bit in their heights, and I tend to grow them in quite similar parts of the garden, so that when I'm cutting them, I'm not having to go to different areas. I can just go to a grasses section and cut grasses at that point in time. 
So what else can we say about the grasses in the garden? Once you've got them planted out, they will grow away pretty rapidly. You won't need to do too much self-care. They don't need pinching out. You don't need to fertilise them at all. You don't need to give them support. They should be robust enough, no matter what the weather, um, to withstand not needing any PMB netting. In terms of harvesting, these are hare's tail grass you can see here and they are lovely and soft and just a peak condition there. They are a great time for harvesting, they're not shedding any seeds and you can cut them to use as fresh or you can cut them for drying. You're wanting to harvest them before they get to the stage where they're shedding lots of seeds or they're starting to break apart. So these are absolutely spot on, they're perfect. If we have a look at this Breeza Maxima, it's still fairly immature. You can see there that it's quite closed up, so they're too early for cutting. So let's see if we can find them at a stage when they're more mature. So here they're starting to get a little bit larger and getting more mature and here you go you can see here this is them when they're all ready to be cut and they're at a nice mature stage now. They're much larger but they've not broken apart either. These grasses are all here at a mature stage. We've got some Breeza media at the front there that's ready to cut. We've got some cloud grass there that you can see. Here's some Panicum Frosted Explosion and again you can cut at varying stages here. The longer you leave it the more it'll exploded like that firework effect that you might know of. But you can cut it earlier if you wish it'll just be slightly tighter. Um, but you can see here it's just starting to explode and looking really pretty. So you can use grasses either fresh or dry them for arrangements. If you're using them fresh they don't need any special conditioning. Sometimes just cut them straight into a bit of water from the field, leave them to condition overnight with the other flowers and then use them in the morning. If I'm drying them I can cut them when they are at a nice stage, not broken apart, tie them together in bunches. You can hang them upside down in a dry well ventilated area away from direct sunlight and they'll dry like that over a few weeks. Once you've dried your grasses, they'll last indefinitely for you, which makes them fantastic for using in winter arrangements. So grasses will self-seed in your garden if you don't cut all the stems for harvesting for flower arrangements and we don't continuously deadhead them then they will set seed in the autumn time and you will get new seedlings coming up the following year maybe not where you want them so if you don't want them to self-seed you will need to cut the stems back. If you don't mind your grasses setting seed then you can leave the stems on for longer to enjoy the flower heads and provide some added interest going into the winter months in your garden. So let's go now and have a look at some of these grasses used for flower arranging. So here we've got a bucket that's ready to go off to the florist and you can see some hare's tail grass there on the right hand side and we've got some cloud grass in there as well. I like offering grasses to florists because it's something that they might not be able to get elsewhere that easily. So I tend just to use grasses quite subtly in arrangements and just add a few stems here and there throughout the arrangement that I'm making just to capture the light and for a bit of movement and texture. So you can see if you can spot any of the grasses here. There we go, there's some panicum there that's just in with those dahlias and rebecca and things. So they do flower grasses from around July through to the first frost, September, October time. Um, so you've got a good stretch there where you can include them in arrangements. And then of course if you dry them then you can use them throughout the winter as well and then into the following year if you've managed to keep them. But they definitely make arrangements just that little bit different. Here you can see some squirrel tail grass. It's there on the left hand side and just there on the left. I love squirrel tail grass, it's just really different. There you can see the breeze of media just around the edges of the flower arrangement there with those tiny little flowers on it. This arrangement's got that lovely squirrel tail grass in it that feels really silky and it's got those lovely reddy purplish tinges just at the tips of it and it just reflects the light really well. 
So here's just a few more arrangements to show you that you can really incorporate grasses into all sorts, whether it's a bouquet or a flower jar. It might be a jar that's going to go on the stall. And they do just add that extra element, I think. And you can just mix them in with all sorts of flowers. They suit everything. And here is some examples of some autumn arrangements because they are flowering that little bit later, July through to autumn, you'll find them in with your dahlias, your rudbeckias, your scabious. And you can see the hare's tail grass there on the left. And the hare's tail grass does get darker as it matures. So this is a slightly darker, creamier one that's there. Here are some on the stall that you can see with some grasses in them with those dahlias and cosmos and scabious. You can see some cloud grass up there on the right hand side. I always think that the photographs and the filming don't actually do it justice. They really do look even better in real life. It's difficult to capture how great they really are when I was doing this um, video for you. See if you can spot the Breeza Maxima in this one. I've just got some there down at the front on the right hand side and the left hand side and there'll be some round the back of the jar as well. Can you see it there on the right? Just lovely dangles down on those slender stems there. Grasses lend themselves really well for using in wedding work because they just stand up brilliantly out of water. They're really different, they get everybody talking. And so here's an example of where I've used hare's tail grass in a buttonhole, which is a favorite use for it of mine. And here's just some few more examples where I've used hare's tail grass in some other buttonholes as well. If you cut them and they're really fresh and newly out, then they can be quite creamy white. Um, but as they get more mature, they develop a tan color. So if you cut them at different stages, you can use them with different colors.